I've had a lot of requests for a video about the Sonoff Touch light switch. Now, of course, I can't just use it and do a review. I've got to crack it open, flash it with Tasmoda, and connect it to Home Assistant. So that's what I did. The Sonoff Touch comes in a US or an EU version. They also have a multi-switch version that includes two or even three switches. I bought the US version and there are a couple things to note. One is that the faceplate is very different from the standard faceplate that us Yankees normally use. I like the look of the touch and I like that they used a capacitive touch button, but this switch probably won't blend in with the look of your house. And it certainly isn't gonna match any of the other switches that you've got. That's minus two points on the WAF scale. I like the company IT'd. They make good stuff, but they don't know how we use light switches in the US. For some reason, they made the faceplate on the touch so that it's oriented in landscape. Every switch box in the US is oriented in portrait. So it's gonna look a little funny standing on its side. But that's enough about cosmetics. Let's get the guts out. Sonoff touch, disassembly. You have to pop this face cover off. Just get a screwdriver under there and that comes off pretty easily. These are actually the pins that you need for flashing. The square one is the 3.3 volts and then they're in the same order as the Sonoff basic. But the button on the touch is not connected to GPIO zero. Pull this one off, it's just connected because these pins here are connected underneath. And then there is just a little bit of a sticker right here, but you can just peel that off. This is actually what you need for flashing. This is all you need. So you don't have to take the rest of this apart. You can leave the rest of this alone. So right here is everything that you need for flashing. The serial pins that you need are here. And then the pin that you need for GPIO zero is this one right here. The touch uses the ESP8285 chip. So when you're setting up Tesmoda in the Arduino IDE, make sure to change the board from 8266 to 8285. The rest of the settings can stay the same. I'm definitely gonna recommend that you export a compiled binary because this board's a little tricky to get into programming mode. And by having a binary file and using Flash Easy, you won't have to wait for the sketch to recompile every time you fail to get into programming mode. Here's my exported bin file touch.bin. It's in the same directory as flash ESP8266. The next thing I need to do is connect my board. Here are the jumpers from my FTDI adapter. Ouch. Poked myself with the jumper. I'm going to use the ground pin on this side as the ground that I'm going to apply to GPIO 0. On the touch, GPIO zero is this pin right here. So I'm going to hold this end of the jumper on GPIO zero with one hand. And then with my other hand, I'm going to plug in my FTDI adapter to my computer. Once it's plugged in, you can release GPIO zero. I want to hold this very steady so that those pins don't move. Now I need to restart Flash Easy and select my touch bin, hit Flash, and there it goes. It's working. Once you finally get it into programming mode and get it flashed, find the IP address and open up the Tasmoda main page. Go to Configuration, Configure Module, and set the module type to Touch. Now we need to set it up in Home Assistant. The Home Assistant entry will look the same as it does for every tasmatized Sonoff. Once you've added it, restart Home Assistant and it should pop up on your overview page. Now it's time to test it out. Here's the Sonoff Touch with Tasmoda ready to test. It's on. This is how you wire it up. Neutral in, line in, line out, just like every smart switch. Connected to a shop light. Touch the button. Light goes on, light goes off. In Home Assistant, light goes on, light goes off. Interestingly, this does change also with Home Assistant. So if I click the Home Assistant button, 
can see the light change on that. Hopefully, you can see it. Okay, so it's working. Now to install it in the Maker Fair display wall. Out in the garage, the Maker Fair wall. Ready to install the Sonoff Touch. This is part of the funkiness of the design of the touch. To get it mounted to the switch box, they've got this like pre plate thing. So we've got to mount this to the switch box, and then we can insert the touch, but it just clips in. And it's connected to the circuit, it's connected to the hot wires. So that seems funky. But, anyways, we're going to install it. Now we connect the wires. It's got these screws. They're labeled. It won't fit past their bracket if you don't have the screws screwed all the way down. These connectors are definitely better than the Sonoff Basic. I think I finally got it, but I think I could just pull it off too. That's no good. Okay, final test. Bingo. If you get your Sonoff Touch installed, and you hear the relay click, but the light doesn't turn on, check and make sure that you don't have your line in and neutral in wires reversed. Don't ask me how I know about that. Okay, all done. One really important thing that you need to consider about the Sonoff Touch, and that is, it's only rated for two amps. Compare that to the Sonoff Basic, that's rated for 10 amps. Now, if you're using LED light bulbs, that probably is not a big deal. Most LED light bulbs are six watts, so you can have 40 LED bulbs before you get to two amps at 120 volts. But if you're using incandescent bulbs, besides destroying the environment and degrading the overall fabric of society, you're also using a lot more energy. Most incandescent bulbs in your house are probably 60 watts, which means you can only have four bulbs connected to the Sonoff Touch. Any more than that, and you'll exceed the two amps. And if you exceed the amp rating, it will end poorly. But overall, for $15, it's not a bad little switch. It works great, looks cool, and as long as you're using LED bulbs, the two amp rating shouldn't be a big deal. So if you're still avoiding soldering, or for some other reason, you don't want to just build a zone off, the Sonoff Touch is a decent alternative. I love getting all your comments and your questions. Keep them coming. I'll do my best to answer them as fast and as accurately as I can. But as you probably found out, I don't have all the answers. So if you get stuck, check out the Home Assistant Forum and the Discord chat. There's a lot of good folks in there ready to help noobs like us. And thanks for using my affiliate links. It's a great way to help me out that doesn't cost you anything. Well, that's it. As always, thanks for watching. Until next time, adios.